Hey boys and girls, welcome to Art Recycled with Mrs. Hollemeyer. Today, we are gonna learn about metal tooling. Metal tooling is when you take a nail, or in this case today, we're gonna take a pen, and we're gonna be carving into 36 gauge metal. Now you can get this metal at Hobby Lobby or Michaels. It's much thicker than aluminum foil, and that's because you don't want your nail or your pen to dig or rip through the metal. We're gonna be coloring it with permanent markers, and the project we're gonna be doing is illustrated letters. And I sort of highlight this lesson with my fourth and fifth graders at Deerwood Elementary, along with art from medieval times. Now today you're going to need quite a number of things and so if you're just doing this at home you may just want to do the first part of the video that just shows how I do the drawing to start this off and maybe the drawing is just a project you don't do the metal part at all but if you want to do the metal version of this with the metal tooling you're going to need a few things you're going to need cardboard you're going to need paper that is the same size as the metal that you're going to be carving in you're going to need some tape you're going to need a pen, a Sharpie, a pencil, and you're also going to need some permanent markers. Again, you don't need all of this if all you wanna do is the drawing itself on paper, in which case a ruler is also helpful. All right, boys and girls, to start us off, I have my paper here, I have a ruler, and I have a pencil. Now these illustrated letters often have a border that goes around them. You can see my border here. My border has some different textures carved into the metal or some different symbols here. And I made my symbols quite simple because again, if you're carving into metal, you don't want the super detailed thing. If you're just doing the drawing, this could be very detailed. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm going to take my ruler and I'm going to line it up with the top edge of my paper. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my pencil and I'm going to trace the opposite side of the ruler. Now I'm going to do this on each side of my paper and that creates an even border going around my letter. Now you can see here, my border also has four separate boxes. That's kind of nice if I wanna put some little designs in later. So now boys and girls, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to draw my letter. And it has to be a block or a bubble letter. And some of us I know um, in fourth and fifth grade aren't great at that yet. So I'm gonna use my ruler to help me do that. Now obviously if you have a curved letter like an S or an O, you wouldn't be using the ruler. But if you have a letter with straight lines, this is great, it's a great tool to use. So today I am going to do the letter A. So I am going to take my ruler and line it up with this bottom corner and I'm gonna have the ruler turn so that it kind of lines up with the middle of this section here. I'm gonna take my pencil and I'm gonna trace both sides of the ruler. Then I'm gonna flip my ruler this way. I'm gonna line up this side of the ruler with that corner there. I'm going to make sure my ruler lines up perfectly with where the ruler hit in the first place in the middle. And I'm going to draw from this side. If my kids do an M or a W, I tend to tell them to always take their paper and flip it this way and make their W like this or their M like this, just because those are two of the widest letters and it works better if it's in a horizontal format rather than a vertical format. So look, already I could have a V if I wanted to, but I'm doing a letter A. So I'm going to take my ruler then, I'm going to flip it this way and connect like this and draw on both sides of the ruler. Now I'm going to take my eraser and any lines that are inside the letter, I'm going to get rid of. There we go. Now, if you want a more stylized letter, this is a pure block letter. You could always erase the ends of your letter that you drew with that ruler and you could style them the way that you want. So maybe I want this more curved coming down like this and I'm gonna erase this side of my A and I want this more curved and going out like that. Maybe I wanna change the middle of my A, I'm gonna erase this here and maybe I'll have this come up like this and come down and I will have this go up like that. There we go. Now, once your basic letter is drawn, now you wanna put some designs in, maybe on the borders. Now, I tell my kids that if you're doing a really detailed drawing and this is just a drawing, that's great. But if you're gonna be doing something in metal, you don't wanna be doing anything too detailed because you're gonna be putting these textures in later. That's called the metal tooling that you don't necessarily need to draw out on the front end. So I'm gonna do some simple things. I'm going to put maybe a large spiral here. Maybe I'll do it over here too. 
Maybe I'll be doing a leaf here, making it big and simple again, because I'm going to carve it in metal. And maybe I will do a leaf down here. And then maybe some very easy lines on the sides. Maybe I'll do a big zigzag here and here. And maybe I'll put a large circle in each space here. And I'm gonna leave the top and the bottom open to do some of that tooling work. I'm not gonna leave anything because I wanna put some textures there later. Whether it's by doing a tight design like this or whether it's maybe doing some needling like that. Now, once this is drawn, boys and girls, you wanna take a Sharpie and you wanna Sharpie it all. All right, now the reason why I Sharpied everything, if you're just doing the drawing, it just makes everything stand out nice, but there's a dual purpose if you're doing the metal tooling version of this. The Sharpie bleeds through the paper, and the side that you're actually going to carve into the metal is this side, not the other side. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my metal, 36 gauge metal that is the same size as my paper, and I am going to tape it over the drawing. A lot of kids want to take this, and they're so used to tracing this side, they want to put it over, but make sure your metal is going over your letter. I'm going to take some tape. And I'm going to tape it in two different places so that the metal is going to stay still. I'm just going to flip this over. I always tell kids, try to put the tape somewhere where they're not going to carve um, some of their design, but it really doesn't matter. There. So now this isn't going to move. So now when this is taped, now you want to take your cardboard and you wanna put it under your metal like this. If you're gonna carve into this, the tabletop is too hard, the metal doesn't have a chance to pop out like you see here. So what I'm doing is I'm putting something soft under it so when I carve, the, the metal can sink down. Hence comes the pen. So now you're going to take your ballpoint pen, you're gonna hold this still, and using a medium to hard pressure, I'm going to start to trace where all of my Sharpie lines bled through the paper. Now, as you can see, when I flip this over, you can see that the metal is starting to be carved. So there we go, boys and girls. I've traced the whole thing. You can see my hand slipped in some spots. You know, art teachers make mistakes too. If your hand slips a lot, I just always tell kids, it's probably not gonna come out of the metal. So just turn that mistake into something. If your hand slips, turn it into a leaf or a branch or something that would fit your design. So now, boys and girls, what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the tape, and you can do that with your fingers, but I often tell my kids to just to take a scissors, slip it in between the paper and the, and the metal, cut, and peel it off. So second to last step, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take Sharpies, and I'm going to color my letter. Now, I'm not going to color over, though, where the lines are raised. I like those silver lines because they help define my shapes and make my shapes look separate in my design. All right, you can see my design is all colored with permanent markers. So now second to last step. Yes, I know there are a lot of steps to this one. Take your metal, and now that it's colored, we're gonna do some tooling. So we're gonna flip it backwards like this, and you're gonna take your pen. And tooling is it, where you're carving a texture into the metal. So you wanna look for some of those areas where you didn't put anything. Needling is where you take your pen or a nail, like they do in some cultures, and you're just taking it and you're piercing the um, metal like this to create your texture. Beautiful, you can see that texture there. So that's one type of texture you could do. I'm gonna do a different texture down here. You could do something that's just a simple line design. So I'm going to do little spirals down here in this area. And this I didn't draw out, you know? This stuff is so little that it would be cumbersome to trace multiple times, especially with your paper on the back. So now that I have this colored, I'm just gonna carve this in with my pen, do some simple type of texture, and then we have one last step that's really gonna make our line stand out in these colored areas. Whew, 
my hand hurts after that. All right, so now I'm gonna flip this over and here's the one last thing I'm going to do. I'm going to take a green textured kitchen sponge that you would use to scrub your pots and I'm just gonna rub over this somewhat gently, very quickly once. What's that, what that is going to do is any of the permit marker that got on top of those silver lines that were punched out, it's going to take that off. It's gonna make these silver lines show up a little bit better and it just makes your design a little bit better. So you can even see here as I do it, now those little dots that I poked for the texture up there, they're now silver and they stand out a little bit better against their blue background.